Chapter 1, A Decision at Pizzuria. The following morning, Marlo showed up at Noah's window as promised, and Noah gave the tiny blue bird a note that simply read, See you after school. Clutching the paper in his little talons, Marlo flew across Noah's yard, which backed against the Clarksville Zoo, then darted over the high wall. Within minutes, the kingfisher would find a hidden tunnel in the secret zoo, pass through it, and deliver the note to Mr. Darby. At 3.30 in that afternoon, the scouts headed to Pete Zuria. They had more than two hours before any of their parents would be home from work. Plenty of time, since their houses were really next to the zoo. On the way, Ella and Richie repeated for the tenth time that their day... Um, tenth time that day their account of somebody watching them from the shadows on their walk home. Megan and Noah listened to all of it, their jaws slack and their eyes wide, just as frightened as they were the first time. At Pizzeria, the foursome pushed through the big double doors and walked in side by side. Noah imagined how they must have looked, steadfast and purposeful, like soldiers marching in a battle. Tank and Mr. Darby were sitting at a booth. Mr. Darby was drinking something from a concession cup, shaped like a hippo. The cup looked a little out of place against Mr. Darby's long gray beard and serious demeanor. Mr. Um, Darby had traded his usual velvet trench coat for common pants and a sweater. Perched on his nose were the regular sunglasses concealing his eyes. Tank was eating. He passed on the pizzeria's traditional dish in favor of something greasier. In front of him was a wobbly stack of cheeseburgers and a mountain of french fries. His enormous arms bulged as he fed fries into his mouth. Mr. Darby beamed as the scouts approached. His, he rose to his feet saying, My dear scouts! The old man swept his arm toward the booth, inviting them to take a seat. The children plopped down, shaking the booth and almost toppling Tank's tower of cheeseburgers. Tank, Richie said, good to see you. But even better to see your fries, mind if I... With a wink, Tank said, help yourself, Bob. Noah turned to Mr. Darby and said, good to see you again. Indeed it is, the old man replied. Tank nodded, winked again, and devoured half a cheeseburger with a single bite. First things first, Ella said. She leaned across the booth toward Mr. Darby. Last night, Richie and I, we saw that guy in our neighborhood again, the shadow dude. Mr. Darby lifted his eyebrows above his sunglasses. What? In an attempt to say it's true, Richie said, Dipu! and sprayed chewed up potatoes into the air. Girls and boys, Megan adjusted her glasses and spoke. He fouled them home. Mr. Darby frowned. And how can you be certain it was? He reduced his voice to a whisper. Him? How can you? Alice said, well, not too many of our neighbors run around the yards in like trench coats and funky looking hats. Mr. Darby said nothing, but he and Tank shared an uneasy glance. I saw that, Richie said as he moved in for another sloppy helping of fries. His hand bumped Tank's and seemed puny and pale against the big man's dark skin, massive knuckles. Yeah, Noah said, I saw it too. If there's any chance that we might be in some kind of like trouble, you guys need to tell us. You're right, Mr. Darby said. You'll need to know all of that about the shadow, as that is certain. However, this is not the time or the place, which leads into nicely why I asked the four of you here today. Go ahead, said Noah. Um, when will it be safe for the four of you to come back? To the secret zoo? Megan asked. I'm not so sure I ever want to see that place again. Understandably, given your past plight, dear Megan. Mr. Darby was referring to the three weeks she had spent trapped in the dark lands, forbidden land at the edge of the city of species inside the secret zoo. Do uh, you all feel the same way? The scouts glanced at one another. They kept silent. Perhaps you will want to consider a single trip back, yes? Then we can talk about the matter further. After you cross over, Tank and I will arrange for an escort to see you back safely to the city of species. An escort? Ella said. Yes, we'll arrange guides to see you across the sector. Knowing the sectors were in different regions of the train inside the secret zoo, Noah asked, What exhibit do you want us to enter through? Tank cut it. Metropolis. Isn't that what you were thinking, Mr. D? Mr. D nodded, or Mr. Darby nodded. Your entire commitment will be less than two hours. What do you say? The scouts traded a look of uncertainty, and then they all 
All eyes settled on Noah. After a moment, Noah said, Okay, we'll check it out at least. Excellent, Mr. Darby clapped his hands and rubbed his palms together. What day will you come? After waiting for Richie to free up enough space in his mouth in order to enable to speak, the scouts decided on Saturday morning, which was two days away, as long as they could clear it with their parents. They decided on 8 o'clock, an hour before the zoo opened. Very well, I'll instruct the zoo guards to allow four of you in to the zoo early. Mr. Darby stood up with Tink. But how do we get inside? Megan said, at like Metropolis. Like, how do we get in? Just fine. Just fine, Daisy, Tink said. She'll know what to do. Mr. Darby added, your parents permitting, we'll see the four of you Saturday. Tipped his head and Tink, he and Tink left through the double doors. That's it then, Noah said. Yep, Ella said, Saturday at Metropolis. Scouts exchanged empty expressions. With the back of his hand, Richie wiped ketchup from his chin. Then the four of them rose to the booth and stepped outside. As they made their way to the front gates, no one said a word. To Noah, the silence felt strange. It was as if they wanted to save their words for whatever they might face on Saturday. Whatever they might discover at Metropolis. Noah had enough experience in the secret zoo to know that could be just about anything.